Hey guys, uh, occasionally I'll get questions from friends or family that know that I have a garage gym and they'll just be like, hey, where do I start? Because uh, most people are smart enough to know that you, it's probably not the best way to go about things to just go out and buy the first shiniest piece of equipment you see. Because there, as it turns out, there can be huge fluctuations in how expensive of something you're getting versus how much quality it's gonna bring. So, um, just briefly, my basic approach to my garage gym is I just want the best way to save money is to get things that have multiple uses, right? So if you go in, out and buy a um, ski erg, for example, that literally has about one use and it's going to cost you like a thousand bucks. Where if you get a set of dumbbells, boom, I mean a hundred bucks and you can do countless things with them. So you'll kind of see as I explain each piece of equipment, I'll explain why I got it, if I got it new or used, why did I choose that source, and how you can save money versus also getting good quality. So yeah, we'll just start with the, the centerpiece of most garage gyms, and that's the squat rack. So this is a RML 3W Rogue fold-out squat rack, and it's quite a mouthful, but Basically, the only thing special about it is that if you see these orange pins back here, um, if I need to, if I want to pull in my car or something, all I do is pop those orange pins out and I fold each of these sides against the wall and it just opens up more space. So a lot of people really like these for maximum flexibility. To be honest, I've only used it, like the folding in part, I've only used it like... Th now, I did buy this rack new. It cost me... Uh, about $600 after shipping and everything. And the reason I decided to get a new rack was first of all, I really at the time wanted a fold out rack or a folding in rack. And you don't find many of those used. So sometimes you're just faced with the option to buy it new. But the other reason I didn't have a problem buying it new was because um, Rogue has a really good reputation for uh, really good workmanship, quality, like, no defects. I just wanted something that would be easy and very durable throughout the entire time I was using it and abusing it. Some ways to save money on this if you don't want to go the $600 route. Um, Rogue is I think the intermediate price. You have PRX Performance. The, their racks are kind of the ones you see more on Instagram. If you want to go cheaper there's Titan Fitness. That They're a brand that pretty much they honestly just copy everything that Rogue does, but they do it cheaper. And that usually means you are getting a cheaper product. So for example, when I was buying this rack, I heard on the Titan one, some people having trouble uh, getting their bolts through and they'd have to send the rack back because the, the hole wasn't quite big enough or you know, slight imperfections here or there. I'm sure for the most part, they're great. And it's a choice that you can make if you really want to maximize saving money, but you really need a fold out rack. That being said, I would honestly suggest if you don't find that a fold-out rack is absolutely necessary for you, I would advise against getting one because you can save so much more, just get more for your uh, money by getting a regular rack. You can find the power racks that aren't attached to the wall, there's freestanding. You can find those fairly frequently on Facebook Marketplace. Usually people, it's something that people are trying to get out of their garage because it takes up space and they don't use it. So it's one of those instances where you can take advantage of their loss and say, uh, you know, honestly, it's just something big and bulky they're trying to get rid of. And you can usually find them for 100, 200 bucks um, on Facebook Marketplace. Save quite a bit of money that way. That's enough on the rack. Um, on the bar, I got a uh, Rogue barbell for $295. This was, this was honestly the only other thing that I decided to buy brand new that I didn't want to compromise, and here's why. Uh, have you ever been in the gym and you pick up a barbell that's kind of bent or curved, right? And you're trying to do bench press or deadlift and it's just trying to roll out of your hands, it doesn't feel right. I honestly just hate that feeling. And the Rogue barbells come with a lifetime warranty. So I love that. I was, I was willing, I knew that I would be abusing this bar. I'm doing clean snatches, throwing it around. I want to be able to uh, not have to treat my barbell delicately, so to speak. So I was totally fine splurging um, on this barbell, but you can get cheaper ones on Facebook Marketplace, usually for about 100 bucks, uh, or even 
you know, stores like Dick's Sporting Goods and stuff, they'll be like 100 bucks brand new. Just know that if it's something you're kind of swinging around, beating around, like it's going to bend at, at some point in its lifetime. All right, so we'll move over to the cardio equipment. And one thing I just want to emphasize on the cardio equipment is make sure you're getting something that you're actually going to use. People love to get cardio equipment thinking it's going to be like their weight loss miracle pill and they're just going to fill their garage up with it and it's going to take up space most of the time and they're not going to end up using it. So get something that, that you find yourself using often at the gym. Um, and for me, that's, that's an air bike. So these things, I've been a runner, uh, you know, as long as I've been able to run basically. And these things spike my heart rate like nothing else. And so I love them. I love uh, working them into to wads that I do. Now this one you can tell by the color <laughs> and design that it's pretty retro. So this is a 1979 Airdyne. And I'll tell you what, it's old, but I saved $960. I saved $960. Brand new, these will cost you right around a thousand bucks before shipping even. I got this on Facebook Marketplace for 40 bucks. You know, so someone, he's like, hey, my mom doesn't use it anymore. She's getting old, 40 bucks. I was like, happy to. The only thing that has changed in the past 50 years that we've had these bikes is this monitor here. So nowadays it's nice and electronic, digital. It tells you your calories, your pace, that type of thing. For me, I was like, well, is it worth $950? Not to me. If you really, really decide you want the monitor, I've seen on Reddit people will um, get the the newer monitor for I don't know 100 bucks or something. Uh, kind of engineer, just get a couple piece, couple magnets on the wheel and and get it hooked up that way. I guess it's never been that worth it to me to figure that out, but I know that people have done it. So you wouldn't be the first if that's the way you wanted to go. Bumper plates. Now uh, weight plates are something you can always find used or new oftentimes you can find new ones for actually decent deals on Amazon um, new for me is always the way to go because most times weight plates they have a pretty long life and the amount of markdown you can get on a new uh, on a used one is well worth the you know small percentage of life that that's actually been taken out of it, if that makes sense. So these are Rogue HG bumper plates. And I got these um, off Facebook Marketplace. They are still new in the package. I got them for, I think, 290 bucks. And so that was a way to get just a, a discount on something that was in new condition. Um, but, you know, someone just wasn't using anymore. Uh, these 10 pounders, I eventually got desperate. Uh, so these are 445s, 235s, 225s, and then 410s that I have. And eventually I just got desperate. I wasn't really seeing any good deals. I just got some new. Um, you know, if I waited longer, there's always always wait deals around. But that's probably the best place to go. I decided to get um, bumper plates as opposed to steel ones. So a, a good price for s used steel plates is like a dollar a pound. If you find anything below that, you know, go for it. I got bumper plates because, uh, you know, I'm doing the snatches, doing CrossFit style workouts here and uh, dropping the weights. I don't want, something people don't consider is you don't want to make a hole in your floor and you also don't want reverb throughout the house. So you kind of get these denser bumper plates where sometimes you can get these very rubberized ones that they'll last forever, but they're very bouncy and you'll get a lot of sound coming from your garage. So if you're out here working like your family or roommates or whoever they're gonna they're gonna hear the workout too so I like I like these bumper plates quite a bit now as far as storing them uh, in the past when I first got them I just kind of keep them on the floor uh, stacked up and the the cons to that are it's just kind of annoying trying to peel them off the floor every time I need to use one and they also take up floor space and floor space is the most valuable thing uh, in your garage gym, it's kind of like what people say about time, you're never going to get it back. Well, space in your garage gym is the one thing that you can never get back as soon as you put something in there. So for holding these, 
The solution is you can buy a weight plate holder online for $100 or $120. For me, that was something that it's not going to get much abuse. I literally just needed to hold up my weights here. My weights are not trying to jump out and escape or anything like that. So I just built it with wood. So it doesn't have to be some crazy sturdy thing. I uh, just got some 2x4s, um, got a, a couple pieces of wood dividing the different weight groups. You know, you just measure it out ahead of time. But you literally just get a few pieces of wood, screw it together, and boom, you're done. That cost me about $15 in an hour of my time, um, as opposed to like $100 to $120 online. So super easy way to save some money there. Okay, uh, another thing super useful is plyo boxes. You can do so many things with these for the amount of space they take up. Um, any box, you can get three different heights out of it for varying difficulties of burpee box jumps, regular box jumps, box squats, incline push-ups, anything you need some kind of elevated surface for. Super useful. I found it was uh, worth it to finally get one for the garage gym. And uh, if you order these new, they are normally between $120 and $150, depending on your source. And the thing is, people, a lot of people don't realize, but there are so many designs you can look up for just building your own, and it's super easy. You literally just go to Lowe's or Home Depot. You don't even, the only tool you really need is a screwdriver. You go to Lowe's or Home Depot, you get a sheet of plywood, you tell them, I need it cut to these measurements. You know, most online um, plans will tell you like the measurements you need for your wood. Say, I just need to cut to these measurements, take it home, Put some wood glue on it, get it together, screw it together, and boom, you're done. I cut handles into it later just to make it more convenient to move around, but definitely not required. Uh, total cost for this was $50 to $60. So easily saved half or more of what I would have spent getting it new, and I get tons of use out of it. All right, next thing, uh, treadmills. Now, there might be some who disagree with me, but... Uh, I, I do not think that treadmills are a necessary part of most home gyms because in my mind, why not just open up your garage and go for a run? Um, but in my case, as with many others, uh, there could be reasons you want a treadmill tucked away in the corner of your garage. And for me, it's because I live in Wyoming right now where the winters can get pretty brutal. So some days just super cold outside, the sidewalks are iced over, I'm not gonna go out there to run, but I still want to get my running in, so I have a treadmill that, it's old, but it gets the job done. Uh, this one cost me 70 bucks from Facebook Marketplace. The beautiful thing I found about treadmills is they're usually one of those objects that are just big and bulky that a lot of people buy because they think it's gonna be like their magical health cure and unfortunately they lose interest in it and it just sits in their garage and most people are just wanting to get the big bulky object out of their garage it's kind of like a piano like sometimes you literally find them for free if you're just willing to move it because it's something big and heavy people can't move by themselves same thing with treadmills this one cost me 70 bucks if i waited longer i know i know plenty of people that have gotten them for free uh, and and pretty nice ones too, honestly. Uh, way nicer than this one, just because people needed it gone. So, with the treadmill, if that's something you're looking into, definitely something I'd recommend getting used. Yes, there are electronics and stuff that maybe, if you're really planning on running it into the ground, maybe it's worth it to get new. But again, a lot of people buy these, barely use them, and they're just looking to get them out of their garage. So definitely keep your eyes peeled wherever you find used gym equipment. We will move on to dumbbells. So in my gym I have two uh, 45 pound dumbbells and a pair of 10 pound dumbbells that I got for $95. So that's actually a really good deal. I found if you're getting uh, on the used dumbbell side anything under a dollar a pound pretty good deal. So as soon as I saw these listed I went and grabbed them. Here's my thoughts on dumbbells. Um, so a, a, a new price, if you just get like your most basic Amazon dumbbells, it's probably gonna be closer to like uh, $1.50 a pound. So that can 
that can add up. Um, for me, it's worth it just to get some used ones. There's not too much that can fail on them. It's not like a barbell that can get bends in it. Um, you know, it's just it's just a heavy weight you pick up over your head or something. Here's my opinion on them as well. I see lots of people with garage gyms that have just the nice row of weights like you'll see in a, a regular gym, and that's awesome, I'm jealous. But I don't think it's a necessity if you're looking to get a gym on a budget. You just need a few variations in weight. Um, you can incorporate them into your workouts, and if you need to account for big jumps in weight, up or down, just vary your number of reps. But you don't necessarily need you know, an increasing set of dumbbells like every five or 10 pounds. That's, that's awesome if you have it, but it's gonna take up space. Uh, you'll probably use them less frequently than if you just get a few pairs of dumbbells and it's also gonna cost you a lot. So I just got a few pairs, I use them all the time. Uh, getting them used was a great way to get them for me. Now to hold a lot of my equipment, just miscellaneous stuff like dumbbells. I had this old weight vest that I honestly got for like a Christmas present years and years ago. On the Rogue website, for example, you will find three tiered shelf, 43 inches wide, on the Rogue website for $450. This one I got off Amazon, cost me 60 bucks. Um, yes, it's definitely not quite as um, sturdy or whatever, but like, that's the thing is, you, you gotta make sure to look, but some of these are rated actually higher than you'd expect. Like this, this, each of these shelves is rated for something like 225 pounds of load. And that's the thing is, man, I put my dumbbells up there and on any given shelf, I really only have space to put like 100 pounds of weight on at any time. So it's more than sufficient, save me hundreds of dollars. And as long as you just have a, an open mindset to be like, oh, it's okay if I set my dumbbells on a regular shelf. Um, there's really no reason why I'd see to not just get a, a regular shelving unit. Just make sure it's rated for, for those higher weights. Oh, finally, I do not want to miss this. One of the, the next thing is one of the biggest areas that people trying to build out a garage gym, they totally don't think about, they don't account for it in their budget and it can end up doubling their budget. And that is gym flooring. So. Some people, until you start getting your equipment in, they don't realize that, oh, there's something, that I need some kind of surface to protect my flooring from the weights hitting it day after day. And uh, what I have here is five sections of four foot by six foot, three quarter inch thick horse stall mats from Tractor Supply. So you can get these exact same mats at regular like gym or fitness suppliers for like a hundred dollars in that so total this flooring would be 500 bucks just for this space here um sometimes you can get them in like one foot by one foot sections that can cost even more i literally went into tractor supply they always have these in stock 40 bucks a section so what could have cost me 500 i got for 200 bucks all the same material I love this flooring because it's pretty much bulletproof. I've been throwing weights on it for a couple years now, had no issues, I've spilled water on it, it soaks it up. It's literally, I'm pretty sure they're made to use in horse stalls, that's why they're called horse stall mats. It's one, honestly one of the biggest um, gym hacks out there. So if you are looking for gym flooring, definitely go with the horse stall mats. Hopefully that was a good overview for you of like what a, a possible gym build out is. You might have different pieces of equipment, but take those general principles from where I found different uh, pieces of equipment useful, different ways to save money on them, and uh, make a, a good gym for yourself. If there's anything I missed, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments.